Hello viewers uh, and uh, welcome to this special interview with the governor of Sokoto State, Alhaji Aminu Waziri Tambwal, who is also one of the top ranked politicians in this country. Governor, you yeah, are welcome to this interview. Thank you very much for uh, Let me start uh, by asking you about your career is, is even before you started politics. You trained as a lawyer, and indeed you practiced as a private uh, lawyer for some time. What uh, drew you away from that into politics? Truly, I started as a, a trained teacher uh, who received his teacher training at uh, Government Teachers College, Dogondaji. Uh, uh, while there still, my immediate senior brother was at the College of Legal Studies here in Sokoto and um, uh, Alaj Ablai Waziri. And uh, his influence also uh, made me to, uh, to, to go into uh, studies of law. Initially, I was offered Islamic studies by the Usman Danford University after my matriculation, but I had to seek for interfaculty transfer to actualize that aspiration of becoming a lawyer. Soon after my national service, I started the private practice here in Sokoto under the tutelage of late Ambassador Adamu Umar at his private chambers. So that's a bit unusual because normally in that generation you will go into Minister of Justice and be a state council. Why, yes, I was, why didn't I, you... I was offered, I was offered uh, uh, the opportunity of going to the Ministry of Justice and um, uh, I was also offered uh, a slot, a magisterial slot at the, at, at the bench of Sokoto State by the then Chief Judge Justice uh, Bella Abdullahi. I told them that, look, my aspiration is to go into private life and um, be an entrepreneur in, 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 in the legal sense, uh, rather than going into a white collar job of, of either Ministry of Justice or taking a slot as a magistrate. So I, I politely turned down the, the, the two offers from uh, the Ministry of Justice and, 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 and the bench. But then why, why politics later? Why didn't you stay and be a son and a successful private lawyer? Well, uh, all of it is uh, about interest and, and, and how one feels like uh, deploying uh, his God-given talent and, uh, and, 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 uh, and knowledge in, in, into how best you can serve the people and the humanity. Uh, uh, when Nigeria was preparing to return into uh, to, to, to democratic governance, I initially was a legal advisor to one of the political parties here, uh, the DP and then under the uh, President Abacha. And, um, and, and, and that also get me, got me closer to politicians and political actors uh, in the state. So I, I also developed into, and of course my immediate senior brother was in the House of Reps. Uh, Oroba Ablai Waziri was in the House of So that, that, that influence of his being my brother and seeing how, watching him, how they were playing the politics and uh, my closeness to the pe people like Omar Shinkafi, later the Ogi and the rest of them, I, 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 I developed interest in, in, in politics as I was following up on, on, on all of that, advising politicians, advising political parties, uh, defending uh, election petitions and prosecuting some uh, made me to really uh, develop interest in, in, in politics. You burst into national life, I mean, as a House representative member who suddenly went against the party big guns and became the speaker. So we, we knew who were against people, the, the, the whole party hierarchy, the president, they were not happy with that. Who supported you to do that in addition to your colleagues? We know you had colleagues. Are there other political forces that helped you in that uh, in that dramatic... Uh... There were very many uh, political leaders in this country that were interested in what was going on, uh, principally uh, uh, because uh, we were uh, all interested in evolving and establishing a democratic culture whereby uh, the legislature should be seen to be independent. So, so there were some political leaders, of course, who really uh, 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 supported us, encouraged us to, in what we were doing. I will give you some examples. When my colleagues approached me to say, go and be our candidate, I said, no, my idea of this is, let us identify the qualities of who should be our speaker for the seventh house of representatives. They said, no, it's you. I said, no, it's not about me. Let us identify those qualities. 
And they sat down, came up with those qualities, a criteria, and they came back and said, look, all of this criteria, you have checked the boxes. Are you sure they said they are sure? Are you sure they are sure? Okay, for me to accept to go into this, first, you need to go back to my home base. You need to go and meet President Shoshagari. Shagari, may Allah have mercy on him, and Governor Ali Magataka Dawamoko. One other person I will not want to mention. I asked them to come to Sokoto and meet these three personalities and seek for their opinion. Because I told them, I am a cultured person. If these people should ask me to back out, I may find it difficult. And I don't want a situation whereby I will go with you and at some point disappoint you. So they came and met President Shagari. They went and met Senator Wamoko. Senator Wamoko said, look, if you are not going to abandon my younger brother halfway, I am with you. So the support started from my homestead. And of course, there are several other leaders. If, if well, people like President Babangida, people like General Ali Ugusawa, people like Tiku Abuakar, people like Shwaji Bola Ahmed Tinibu, uh, uh, Chief Bisi Akande, Baba Oshoba, uh, and a host of others who are leaders in this country who are interested in what we are doing. I've had cause to engage with some of them directly, some others through proxies, to discuss how it can be achieved. And, 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 and we got the support from, uh, from them and some other governors who were interested in what we are doing, even in PDP, as a then, a number of them. And so we, 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 we embarked on it, what we call house project. And um, I, I gave them my commitment. I said, well, since I have the support of my home base, I can go into it and I will not look back. And that was how, by the grace of God Almighty, we were able to prosecute that project. And I became the speaker of the 7th House of Liberty. Yeah, from the, from the speakership, you, of course, instantly became a national politician. And uh, you became an obvious candidate for, for president, which indeed you try to be. So it's a bit of a surprise. Uh, that you you didn't pursue the national uh, uh, scene as a, as a national politician and you came back to Sokoto. Is it a matter of opportunity? You, you couldn't really contest at the national level, especially in 2015, so you had to choose a second, second best. Well, you know, I, I, I've, I've mentioned something about my political trajectory, and that is consultation, consensus building, engagement, discussions. And, 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 and I believe that our position then when I was in AP, APC in, in 2015 was more of that of consensus. Uh, consensus building uh, discussions and engagements. And, 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 and when, when um, uh, uh, it was clear that most of the uh, leaders of our political movement were, were in favor of President Muhammad Buhari Picking the ticket of the APC, I, 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 I didn't go to the, the, the primaries with him. Uh, I, we sat down, we reviewed the situation, we consulted, and then I stepped down and said, look, I do not even intend to go further into any, any primaries with uh, President Muhammad Buhari. And that was, that was how, how we arrived at that position, simply because, as I told uh, uh, several people, and that, that's my position, it's not about my ambition, it's not about me, it's about who can do what we are set to achieve. It's not about individual, it should be about the country. And that was the spirit behind my own decision then, that okay, we've all agreed to support President Muhammad Buhari as our candidate, as an aspirant. Then uh, we discuss again locally here uh, with the former governor Omoko, we agreed, okay, I, I mean, you come back home and then be governor of Sokoto State. So it was all about consultation, consensus building, and, and, and uh, I will not want to say horse trading, but more of, more of, more of, uh, consult, consultation. What happened in 2019? You are almost, you are the leading candidate in the PDP. And then suddenly, when the numbers are being called, we saw Atiku overtake you. What, what, what was happening in the background? Uh, well, uh, you, you see, first and foremost, as believers in God, we all know that uh, it is only what God has ordained that happens. And uh, God's time is the best. Uh, there were some political movements that uh, uh, made that situation to change. And, 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 and Atiku Abokar 
was it emerged as, as, as our candidate. Is it uh, politics or is it some power brokers behind the scene? Because that's what we... It, it's, it's, all, it's all about politics. Power broking, mm -hmm. consultation, networking, it's all politics. So it's not necessarily about power broking, it's, it's broadly and generally about politics. Mm -hmm. So there are movements, there were personalities who felt that, look, let us support uh, Atiku Abakar Wazir Adama to be the candidate of the party. Mm -hmm. And they were able to sway and convince some other, 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 other leaders of the party, and, 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 and so it happened. And I, 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 I accepted the, the outcome. That morning, I addressed the, the, the press and accepted it and, and, uh, and gave my commitment that it's not about me, it's about my belief and conviction that we needed uh, to have another personality in the Aso Villa, uh, other than President Muhammad Buhari at that time, and I, I supported Atiku wholeheartedly. Now we are almost in another round of presidential and nomination process. I assume you are going to contest uh, 2023? Well, I have uh, given my commitment to, uh, to, to, to it that I will uh, be consulting and I'm still consulting. I, I, will, uh, I will start going out publicly on the consultations. I have done some bit of, of underground uh, consultations. I will now start possibly by next week, uh, public appearances uh, on those consultations. And at the end of it all, after getting the feelers and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, measuring the political barometer, uh, I'll, I'll make my, my position known uh, very soon. Usually when politicians tell us they're consulting, I think we can guess the outcome. Well, as I said, it's something I've tried before. You are aware, 2014, 2015, consultations made me not wrong. The outcome of my consultations made me not to run, 2015. The outcome of my consultations made me to run in 2018. So I, I, I cannot say with certainty now that the, how, this is how the outcome is going to be. I am going to consult, and then uh, I'll come out letters by February to make uh, my position known. So, so it's work in progress. Is there a possibility, are there scenarios that will make you not to contest for the president. Well, uh, I'm, I'm talking about, for example, the push by the southern governors to have a southern candidate in your party. You know, I have, uh, yes, I have made my position very clear on that issue. That when the southern governors met, I made their position. The northern governors met in Kaduna, I made their position. And I'm a, northern, I'm a governor from the north. So I'll not be bound by the position of the southern governors in their own, on their own platform. In any case, nomination process, one, has to do more with the political parties and their arrangements, not forums of governors. Two, it has to do more fundamentally with the rights of citizens to, of, 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 the, of their choice either to run for election or not to run for election at all. So these are even more fundamental than whatever arrangement any governance forum is, is coming up with. So I, I, I believe that uh, is part of the process. The southern governors are saying that it should go to the south. The northern governors are saying that it should come to the north. And I belong to the northern governors forum and I was part and parcel of that decision. But politically, you are a very savvy politician. Do you see a southern candidate in the PDP winning the election if, if he's nominated? Well, you see, it depends on certain fundamentals and indices. If it is the decision of political players in Nigeria, just as was done in 1999, that the major political parties agree among themselves to field candidates from a particular region, as was done in the case of President Olishikun Obasanjo and Chief Olufalai, then if, the, if Nigerians are having only two options, clearly from two regions, then <laughs> one of them would be. If otherwise, if there's any political party that decided to do south and the other one does north, the numbers will count in this case. And we all know the voting strength of each and every block in this country. So it's, 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 it's up to political parties that are really interested in winning election. Winning election not be, being guided by certain uh, primordial considerations or sentiments to now uh, strategize 
and, 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 and throw up a candidate that can win election for that political party. So it's a matter of strategy. Will you see yourself being, let's say, a vice presidential candidate to a, to a southern, to an eastern candidate, for example? I'm not fixated on being the president of Nigeria. I, I want that to be clear. And always ready to support a process that will bring in one of our best to be president of Nigeria. What do you think of Nigeria under President Buhari? Well, you see, I participated in that process and we had a very, very clear understanding of the need for a change. And God blessed our efforts and President Muhammad Buhari became the president of Nigeria. Unfortunately, in the process, because of the way and nature the government was formed, some of these uh, uh, problems began to manifest right from the, 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 the nomination and uh, uh, proclamation of the National Assembly and emergence of the Legislative of the National Assembly and all of that. And, 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 and suddenly, the differences of the political parties that formed the, the, the coalition to form government became manifest, obviously manifest. And then there was couples. On the side of the, uh, the, the CPC, President Muhammad Buhari was at the helm of affairs. Vice President Yabi Osibajo was the vice president the new PDP was able to get President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of uh, 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 Representatives. And, and, and you could see that there was, there was, there was clearly uh, a kind of um, uh, very major uh, disagreement between the legislature, mainly the Senate, and, 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 and the executive arm of government. That somehow impacted on, on, on the takeoff of the administration. And even the delay by Mr. President himself in the appointment of his ministers also impacted negatively on the, because he came with a, with a very, very heavy uh, 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 goodwill and, 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 and all of that. The support was there. But that delay really, really, really didn't, didn't uh, uh, give him a good start. And, and the expectation was that, ah, with this delay, Mr. President is going to come up with a very fantastic uh, team of ministers. And by the time the, the, the ministerial, people said, ah, why, why the delay then? If you know that these are the names that you're going to submit to the Senate as, as your ministers, why this delay? Because people were thinking that Mr. President was really looking for some other people that were not those that were on, those, uh, on that list. So, 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 and again, in the process of forming the cabinet, there wasn't much consultation with other stakeholders to form the government. So, so the, all of this from takeoff really affected the administration. And I remember very well that a number of us governors met Mr. President and advised him, I think in 2015, 2016, to appoint economic advisor, to appoint political advisor. He clearly told us that he doesn't need any of those. But in 2017, I mean, 20. Uh, 22, 2021, towards the end of 2021, President Mahmoud Bari decided now to appoint a political advisor. So I, I, I believe... Economic one. Yeah. Economic yeah. advisor. Yeah. So uh, you, you can see that, uh, honestly, uh, uh, from takeoff, there were some mistakes. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't like mentioning names, but some of the principal officers of ad his administration had no public service experience. Some of them, those that are supposed to be very close to Mr. President, working with him on a daily basis, had no public, yes, they were, some of them were good in private sector, but they had no public service experience. And not to only talk of public service experience, they had no democratic governance experience. And the dynamics of democratic governance are fundamentally different, even from the uh, from serving under a military uh, dispensation. Not to talk of a situation whereby most of those at that close, uh, uh, closer level, uh, that uh, controlling levels of power, they had no public service record at all. So it was a fundamental 
mistake. I know that there are some areas in government that you need to bring in uh, people from the private sector who can, who, can, who can serve. But you must be able to now separate the two. Where are those areas that you need people from the private sector? And where are those areas that you need someone from the public service? I'll be very specific. You cannot expect someone from private sector to work for you efficiently, effectively, in civil service, I mean, as, 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 a, as a SGF, without public service record. It would be extremely difficult. Maybe if he had served as either a minister or, or, or he was in, 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 in public service somewhere, he can come in and serve as your SGF. Because SGF is essentially about managing uh, the entirety of the executive arm of government, in a way. And, 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 and suddenly you have someone without that experience as being your SGF. So it's, it's the takeoff was faulty. What of now? I mean, has the takeoff really sort of crippled the government? Uh, we, are, we are talking of another year for, to go. Yeah, well, uh, takeoff, when you have a faulty start, it, it will be difficult also always to, to correct. And, and, and of course, it has not been effectively uh, corrected. We were thinking that with the coming of uh, uh, Professor Ibrahim Gambari as uh, chief of staff, things will uh, improve, but, but honestly, uh, not as, as, as we expected. Let me bring two criticism of your own government, or, or of yourself, mm -hmm. uh, now that we have. Uh, one, that you constantly change parties. Mm -hmm. you are, I mean, one can count half a dozen parties in the last Not two, to half a dozen, <laughs> 20 <laughs> years. Okay, maybe, maybe a, few, a little less. That's one criticism. The second one is that the attention you give to national politics may have affected your effectiveness as a governor in Sokoto. What, what do you say to that? Well, my changing political party platforms has been circumstantial. Right from my first election, which I contested on the platform of ANPP. The circumstances in my local politics necessitated that we leave ANPP in a transition to DPP with Governor Bafarawa. When we were with him and he decided that, look, most of us, including myself, would not contest on the platform of DPP, I mean, it was, and I felt that I can win my election in my constituency. I told Governor Bafara in his residence, Governor Bafara, I'm not with you on this one. I would rather go and try on another platform. I already connected back with Governor Wamoko then, I mean, with the, uh, Deputy Governor Ali Mugatagado Wamoko then, on the platform of ANPP. So I, uh, I, I then we negotiated collectively to join PDP. So it was circumstantial because of my conviction that I can win my election on any platform. And to the glory of Almighty God, and I'm grateful to the people of my constituency and the people of Sokoto State, I have won my elections five times consecutively. 2003, 2007, 2011, 2015, 2019. So it's based on my conviction that I can win the election. And when circumstances warrants that I, I be denied ticket of my political party, or circumstances demand that I have fundamental disagreement, as was the case in 2015 with the PDP, I disagree with President Jonathan, the way he was running the government, the way Nigeria was being run, and I left and joined the forces with the APC. On my conviction, I went against the tide in the Northwest in 2018, 2019, where you have President Muhammad Buhari as a sitting president. I took the risk against the tide and decided to pretend with the PDP because I lost confidence in the way Nigeria was being run by President Muhammad Buhari in 20, as far back as 2017, 2018. And I made my position known. And I campaigned on the basis of that here in Sokoto and nationally. So my changing of political parties is circumstantial. And it has never changed my own ideals, my ideology, my person, what I believe in. And I've always said that our political parties in Nigeria 
have never been, particularly from 1999 till now, ideologically driven. Otherwise, what, uh, what is Brother Muhammad Buhari doing with certain characters in APC? How do their path cross? I don't want to mention names. But, but they are there. Some are in his cabinet. And you know that they don't share anything in common apart from being human, human beings. So, so uh, okay, I, so I, I, I see it's that. It's about that. Yes, and now how do you allocate your time between Sokoto and the national political roles? Well, I, I'll come back to that. It was not my making for me to be in the House of Reps from 2003 till 2015, unbroken. And with the roles I had played at various levels in the National Assembly and in national politics. So I, I, I came with all of that, be it baggage or uh, 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 either plus or whatever. Mm, advantages. Advantages mm. to the government house of Sokoto. Mm. And the people of Sokoto were aware of who they were nominating and who they elected. <laughs> their son, who in their own belief they were saying it, has done very well as Speaker of the House of Reps. So if a Speaker of the House of Reps, politically, you are number four in the, in the hierarchy in Nigeria, they will not expect that their son to be left alone by the national demands whenever, whenever such demands uh, uh, arise. So, so, so I, I, I try as much as possible to do my work as governor of Sokoto. No sector has suffered. That is the most important thing because of my involvement in national politics and the governance of Sokoto. If there's anyone, let them come out and say it. In any case, we are in modern times and you can run government without being physically present. And that is, the, that is, the, that is what, why the world is leading, uh, heading towards. And, and, and as I've said, everything about governance in Sokoto, nothing has suffered. So yes, it's true, I move in and out of Sokoto, and I've tried to explain to the people who have that uh, kind of uh, misgiving, that look, it's not about my movement. Has the work suffered? I believe that, I'm still doing my best as governor of Sokoto, serving the people of Sokoto while I pay attention when the need arises to some national assignments. Finally, what do you think you'll be remembered for, for of all the things you have done in Sokoto as governor? I, I, I want a Sokoto that is repositioned um, in, 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 in many things, in many ways. Uh, we have a lot of um, uh, indices in health sector, bad indices in the health sector, in education, in, 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 in social development, I mean, in terms of poverty rating and all of that. I want a situation where by a few years to come, when the people of Sokoto look, they will appreciate the focus and vision of the government they have entrusted in me as government that have actually impacted positively, more so on human capital development. Repositioning, a Sokoto child, be that child a boy or a girl to face the challenges of the world that are becoming more dynamic and more complex, to prepare them and send them out of the, of the four corners of Sokoto State and compete favorably with the rest of their fellow brothers either in Nigeria or on international stage. That's, that's my, 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 my vision and my, my, my aspiration. Thank you. Uh... Governor Aminu Wazir Tambor for this uh, insight. And thank you viewers for joining us on this special interview on Trust TV. Uh, see you another time.